welcome to the engine markets uh, training session uh, so meanwhile others are joining in we will start with our expected topic today which is analyzing mutual fund portfolios so i hope i am audible to everyone and my screen is visible uh, if not please let me know on the chat box and we will definitely address that so let's get ahead with our expected topic uh, so today we are going to take a look towards portfolio analytics of a prospective client how do we add a prospective client's portfolio into the portfolio section of engine markets and then we are going to you know have a q and a session as well so we are going to analyze a portfolio and then we can uh, suitably come up with some uh, insightful data points for any portfolio analytics whichever you add into the engine markets uh, section so let's head back to our you know terminal where we can uh, you know uh, check out uh, the entire portfolio analytics here just a moment okay so i hope my screen is visible and this terminal is visible to you in the engine markets uh, you know portal so essentially uh, if you want to analyze any portfolio uh, for your prospective clients there is a way to add that portfolios to add them you have to actually get down to this uh, portfolio section in the left side right and once you add any portfolio so there is a portion called this plus button to add a new portfolio so you click on this and if you click on it you can essentially you know uh, you know upload a cas pdf cdsl nsdl cam summary report of any mutual fund you know a uh, cas summary report and then you can you know add a suitable portfolio just like this so this is a, just an example i have added there is an another portion which is called as i assign from excel so let's say you have uh, any isin numbers and the units uh, or an amount or even a percentage example if you have it of your client portfolio you can easily add them up into the system so once you have done this you can easily you know see the portfolio getting added into the system just like this and that is how you can eff efficiently name the portfolio let's say we name it as uh, prospective client 1 right and that is how you can save the portfolio into the system so there are multiple set of folder you can save it but we can run down for the number of folders for that but once we have done this you can create this folder and in the active section in the first tab you can see the prospective client is being added into the system and then you can run the analytics so uh, i hope my voice is uh, you know properly audible i just got a message that my voice was cracking if it is uh, not please let me know on the chat uh, you know accordingly i will uh, try to check the system so let's uh, you know take this uh, you know forward uh, and um, in the analytics if you want to load analytics you know you can essentially see there are two ways to load the analytics one is to directly run this from the system or either from the editor safe so if you run this the analytics loads up with the set of a prospective client or any portfolio added into the left side you can see so this is a great way uh, you know to to manage your portfolio and i will also talk about managing prospective client portfolio in different folders because that is a great way to manage all your prospective client whenever you have the you know next meeting with your prospective clients so let's go ahead with this uh, review of a prospective client so uh, accordingly when we see the portfolio we see lots of parameters here so let's head down to important parameters to to actually check what are the loopholes is there anything which we can actually analyze and come up with a suitable suggestion for the client so let's look towards a direct you know uh, way to understand the correlation which is a pretty much easier way to see what kind of diversification we are achieving from this particular set of a portfolio so essentially uh, you know we, uh, let us clarify the uh, you know correlations here correlations helps us to know that based on the price momentum of the each of the asset into this particular portfolio uh, you know how correlated are they between each other so if the number is closer towards 1 1.00 which is something like 0.97 then it is a very high correlation and if a number is farther away from the one like 0.65 63 then it's a very then it's a considerably low correlation in the equity space of the mutual funds 
so what you can do here is you can effectively you know recognize a high correlated securities in this particular set of portfolio just like this one like franklin blue chip and india a uh, flexi cap or possibly you know aditya birla you know sl mid cap and dsp mid cap and that is how you can actually see if there is a diversification uh, you know um, there in the system of this portfolio of a prospective client or not so here i would definitely want to rebalance or remove some of the securities based on the core correlation itself that is one case you can actually take a look towards and the another important case here is to have your own start date and end date as correlation is very dynamic it changes by the start and the end date this currently considers the correlation of this particular start date but what you can do is you can change the time timeline of this correlation itself to check if they were highly correlated in the in between 2020-17 or 2020 as well you can run this and you can effectively see that there is still a high correlation between these two securities for this particular time frame so it depends on what kind of you know time frame you're choosing you can change the time frame to check the you know the change in the correlation between this time frame and it's a pretty you know a useful way to take a look towards the diversification of the portfolio this is one thing another thing is to actually take a look towards the stats of the portfolio which is just beside the portfolio section so you can see that you know what kind of securities do we hold as a as a client and definitely you will see uh, the numbers you know the one month till five years all these numbers are given here in the system it's a pretty much good way to know that there are some securities like in the mid caps which is having a lower sharp ratio so this gives us a good idea as to if we are taking a call on to one security that should be removed from the system which particular security can be removed as a matter of fact if i uh, you know take a call towards a uh, you know franklin flexi and franklin blue chip one of them either one of them i would have to remove them so i can take a call on based on you know any of the parameters and remove one of them so as a matter of fact i am removing you know uh, franklin india blue chip to easily remove that what you can do is you can just click on this edit slash save as and remove that particular set of fund so now what we are doing is modifying the prospective client's portfolio to see if there is any you know anything which we can do after the modification and then we can compare it up so let's say we want to modify this we can just remove the franklin india blue chip and that is how we have removed and we can also you know uh, remove some other mid caps as well like you know dsp mid caps sundaram so there are too many mid caps into the system which can easily you know uh, you can remove them and add another mid cap all together into the system so now if i load this fund as a you know as a uh, if i rescale this and load this fund and run it then there will be a completely new portfolio so either you can update this which will actually copyright this which will actually be generated into the prospective client portfolio or either you can save it as a new portfolio so you know a modified version can uh, you know also give you an idea that if i save this as a new i can just save it as prospective client you know modified now i can make as many changes as i want as a new set of portfolio so it 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 gives you a quite of a flexibility here and whenever i take a look towards this run analytics i have this two portfolios in place and uh, whenever i check the correlation now i would definitely see a better correlation against you know uh, against the previous portfolio i had and definitely i have reduced some of the securities from this particular set of portfolio but that is how you can use just two tabs like correlation and stats to come up with a proper set of diversification and then we definitely have the contribution so let's load in again the previous uh, you know client again and if we want to see that even if you know uh, we had if we have such a portfolio from the start of 2009 what kind of securities have given a particular set of contributions so you can see here in the contributions as well that uh, you know franklin blue chip based upon its you know asset allocation which is 5.82 the contribution was just 3.89 so comparing it with you know franklin india flexi cap we are having a def, uh, you know uh, definitely for a flexi cap having a better contribution so you can definitely take a call on such securities in a contribution tab itself and just like correlation 
we have also added a start and ended to see a dynamic change in contribution. So let's say we have a dynamic change, let's say in 2016 till 2020, how the contribution has been for these all securities. And that's a great way to know. So you can definitely see these, these were the contributions and, uh, you know, uh, you know, you can actually see here the contribution for flexi and blue chip, which we are comparing for flank Franklin AMCs. It is still unchanged comparing with each other. They, they are similar. They have, you know, flexi cap has been contributing better against the blue chip fund. So accordingly, this is a great way to know that what kind of, you know, contribution we are having for certain set of a portfolio. Yes, it depends upon the allocation towards the portfolio. So, uh, you know, uh, that is how you can actually take a look towards a particular set of, you know, securities here. So once you click on this, that is how you can see the allocations and the contribution towards the portfolio. So, and there's a great way to compare two portfolios, uh, not just this comparison, but I will show you another, you know, a very uh, different way where you can actually compare two contributions in one place. That way is here. What you can do is you can actually share this link, you know, copy this link in one single place and paste it here into the system, right? Now you have another set of a share link, which is activated here in the system. And you can also copy another set of a link of any other client and paste it to another system. Now, this is a great way that, you know, you can compare two sets of portfolios in one place, wherever, where, whereas you can do certain set of dynamic analysis. So I will show you this one with the modified version. Just a moment. And once you copy this you can actually paste it here. So by the way, this share link can be used to share with the client and also the share link can also be used, you know, to use a particular set of, uh, you know, uh, analytics and compare it with each other. So just a moment, we are loading the share link. So once it is loaded, uh, you can actually effectively compare two single tabs. So what I do here in the system is I can easily share two single tabs in one place. So, you know, you can actually check the, you know, performance analytics, the contributions, the stats, the correlation in one single place. So let's say I'm comparing the stats here in the system. I can easily see the stats against each other. So let's say this one with the particular set of portfolio. And it is one of the, you know, one of the ways where you can actually, you know, load in multiple set of share link and then, you know, uh, compare the stats, stats here. So there are a couple of ways you can do this, uh, you know, uh, shareable links analysis. And there is another way to check, uh, you know, any uh, problems with the portfolio is actually the performance. So whenever we check to whenever we look towards the portfolio we normally look towards the transactions what transactions have already happened but what we consider in this analytics is what do we hold as of now for a portfolio and what is the historical back test of the assets we hold today because that is only going to be deciding the next couple of years coming years for this particular set of portfolio. So if you are trying to know the risk of this portfolio, you would definitely want to know that, uh, you know, what is my value at risk? Because normally what we do is we check towards annual volatility, which is anyways, a good way to check the risk, but there is another good way to check is, uh, you know, is the annual value at risk. So what historical value at risk does is it checks the downside risk based on the confidence interval. So now we are, we are going to talk about the confidence interval first. The main thing here is that if we have modified a portfolio of a prospective client, and if we want to know the risk of the modified portfolio, what you can essentially say is that there is a 5% probability from this historical data set that we can have a loss of negative 22.97%, right? And you can actually change this confidence interval to know that if there was a worst to worst scenario that could have happened in a 1% chance, then that this is the loss we could have incurred. And essentially, if you load in another set of portfolio, just a moment, I will just add in another portfolio here. Right. So if you load in another set of portfolio beside it, you can essentially see the VAR of, of any other portfolio here so in the system. 
So here you can see the prospective client var. If I keep this as 99 compared to it, it is negative 40. So the one change I've made, you know, what I've done is I've, I've done a couple of changes due to correlation. I've removed some of the mid caps and added one of the mid cap. And you can essentially see my VAR, which is historical VAR has actually re reduced, but you can actually check the performance and it is way too similar, right? So uh, you can actually see my modified portfolio performance is actually better, but it is similar to the, you know, uh, a prospective clients portfolio. So if you're comparing it with this 13% five year return, which is, which is the modified portfolio we have made in front of you. And this is the one portfolio with a 12%, you know, uh, a return for the five year period. So it's a great way to gauge that if we are having such a risk, are we making such modification that it is actually lesser riskier? Like for an example, if this prospective client, whatever I have, if I add in some lesser riskier assets, maybe like, you know, a balance advantage fund or maybe a, you know, a money market fund. So let's, let's try to, you know, ping in a balance advantage, like Kotak balance advantage, just a moment here. Right. And if you add this into the system and refill this and run this here in the system and run the, VR, would we have lesser risk based on the historical parameter is a question. So what you can do here is you can keep this as 99 and you can see now my historical VAR is reduced more and definitely you can see my five year return is still some way too similar in a 13%, you know, uh, domain. So it's a great way to, uh, you know, take a look towards the changes you're making in a dynamic way. So that's why you can actually use this, you know, couple of share links to do a side by side analysis. And if you have multiple screen in your office, then, then that is a good way to actually add another screen there. And you can, you know, compare it uh, here in the system. It's a great way to actually check the risk. And there's another way to check the risk is actually the down capture ratio. Now in the down capture, if, uh, uh, if you have uh, this, uh, you know, uh, system where you want to know that based on the benchmark, what we have chosen, you can actually check what kind of, you know, uh, behavior we are having against a benchmark. So this is how you can see that, you know, the asset, what we have, this is a portfolio, which is negative 24.13. It is lesser. It has actually had a lesser loss against a benchmark. Similarly, you can compare it with the prospective client here as well, directly by checking it up. The only thing you have to ensure is the benchmark should be changed, uh, same. So here you can see our down capture is actually closer towards the benchmark. So that is one another great way to check, uh, you know, the, uh, the performance of a, a particular set of portfolio. And then there is a, you know, a risk, which is a drawdowns, which gives you an idea that if there is a particular set of risk, this prospective client has, then how much risk the client is actually enduring and how many days it took to recover. Right. So if you have a modified portfolio later down the line for the client, you can actually show the client that you might have better days to recover based on the modified portfolio. So here you can see that, you know, these are the losses and these are the days it took to recover. So all the losses are actually given here. These are the top 10 losses given into the system. And what you can do is you can actually, you know, zoom into one single parameter. So let's say you're taking a look towards this. And here you can see that these are the, you know, it's a drawdown period and it's a huge drawdown period. And this is where the drawdown stopped and the losses started to recover. So that is how you can take a look towards all the losses and the days to recover. And here, you know, in a simple way, if you see this portion, you can essentially see that there is a recovery still going on. There was a drawdown in November, 2021 till July. And there's a recovery still going on and the recovery is 72% recovered. So you can take a look towards the strength of the portfolio of any portfolio. If you have added into the system and once you have added these, you know, portfolios, you can actually take a look towards the position overlap as well. So now we have actually discussed this in the previous webinar and, uh, in the previous webinar, what we have done is we have, you know, given a, uh, comparisons of individual securities and then make up, you know, PPT report out of it. But what you can do is let's say you have a modified portfolio and you want to check a position overlap on the current basis. You can click on this compare button. 
So once you click on this compare button, all the securities gets added into the compare section and there you can easily check the position overlap. And here you can see that Axis, Midcap and Aditya Birla is having 31% positional overlap. And that is one of the great way. And there's another, you know, uh, security which is overlapping. So you can actually check it out uh, from the system itself. If, if I am having a modified portfolio for my client, are we actually having a high position overlap or a low position overlap? So you can easily check that just by clicking on that compare button. So that is, uh, you know, one of the way to check the overlap here itself, right? And uh, in the portfolios itself, there are a couple of other ways uh, to review the portfolio. Another way is to, you know, check the asset allocation. So we are going to just uh, take a brief look towards the asset allocation uh, because here you can actually see if there is a direct equity if added into the system, right? So you can actually see the sources or the causes of those exposure. So let's say if I add, you know, one of the direct equity here, like Sun Pharmaceuticals, right? And I, if I run this, I would uh, definitely see, uh, you know, some of the exposures coming into the system. So that just let me rescale this, right? And here, once I check the asset allocation, you will see that there is some Sun Pharma exposure and this is the causes of those exposure. So yes, you can see the cause where it is coming from and you can see the exposure percentage as well. So you can do this for a detailed view. So once you click on it, you can even check for government securities, securities as well. So if you click on this I button, these are the particular set of, you know, uh, uh, cause of this particular exposure. So here you can check the concentration. If I'm highly concentrated towards, you know, top three securities or top three exposures or not, if there is a, you know, top three exposures, like 40% or 35%, then I may have a problem because it is too risky and the entire portfolio depends upon this top three securities. So let's say uh, as a, you know, example, if I had a 20% equity exposure in Sun Pharma, now, this is a huge case of a, you know, a concentration in one single security. And if I run this back again and check the asset allocation, you can actually see, uh, you know, the concentration being shot up to 26.39%. So if you have such funds uh, added into the system and which are overlapping too much with each other and has a high exposure to a banking stock or a, or a pharma stock, you might see a high positional, you know, uh, concentration. And that is where you can take a look towards this, you know, uh, this insightful function that are you truly concentrated towards, you know, top three or a top five securities. So that is where you can actually take a look towards because this top three securities can dictate 26% of the portfolio. And you can also check the market cap exposures, which is given here. Uh, anyway, we can check, you know, all the exposures in large and mid and small. And then we have the AMC exposure. So these are all the, you know, uh, general analytics you can check for the entire types of the fund we hold, the categories of the fund, the equity sectors we hold. So here you can definitely see a huge, uh, you know, uh, concentrations towards one sector and then that debt. So if you have some debt, maybe through a balance advantage fund, maybe through a, uh, you know, a debt fund uh, altogether, so you can definitely see, uh, you know, some debt exposures and the YTM and the average YTM. And for the average YTM, if there are two, two to three funds, then it averages out the YTM altogether. And you can download this data set in Excel. So this is all about the review of a prospective client portfolio. And essentially, if you want to make a, a PowerPoint report of a prospective client's portfolio, you can easily make that just by clicking on this button. Uh, you can add in the capital, let's say, you know, uh, 50 lakhs or, you know, five crores and you can create the PPT out of it. And as you know that, you know, you can also add in, uh, you know, individual securities into the compare. You can actually, uh, you know, uh, compile both of the PowerPoint in one single place. So this is how the PowerPoint looks like. And uh, there are two ways to make the PowerPoint. One is a capital based and another is the, you know, uh, percentage based. Currently, what I'm showing you right now is a capital based PowerPoint report, which is way too useful, uh, you know, when uh, you can actually check this entire system. So here you can see, uh, you know, the all the sets of the uh, 
portfolios uh, in the portfolios underlying holding which we have added with the 50 lakhs and you can see the amount being break down in lakhs and you know thousands and the exposures as well so this is how you can actually you know uh, make a customized report for any single client and these are all customizable so any data point if you would definitely want to highlight you can actually highlight as well and if you want to add in some comparative data points of these securities you can easily do that by just you know clicking on this compare button so if you click on this compare button all the securities gets added into the compare section and you can export this as a exportable powerpoint report and if you want you know couple of uh, couple of uh, pages to be added into the powerpoint of the previous portfolio that can easily be added so this is how you know this works out let me just show you the powerpoint here as well this is the comparisons report and let's say you want to show the individual risk versus return you can just copy this and add it into the you know prospective clients portfolio and it easily gets added into the system so you can see that is how it has it has been added there is there will be some tweakings required from your side but it definitely you know gets your uh, job easier here to add in some of the you know uh, individual security to show that this is what your security holds as per the individual security in the risk versus return chart and these are the securities you have so some of them uh, you as you can see this is a stock but others are mutual funds so as we go back to the comparative uh, powerpoint which is a great function anyway you can check lots of parameters here which we have already generated which also includes positional overlap you know the performance lots of other stuffs in in the in the particular consolidated format so this is how you can uh, you know use portfolio analytics for any such clients and another way is to actually look towards contribution as well so you know whenever you add in you know one or two funds uh, you know in a prospective clients portfolio you you should definitely look towards the contribution for the last couple of years so if you have added let's say removing kotak balance advantage you have added you know sdfc balance advantage and if the contribution is way less then there is you know uh, the reason for adding sdfc balance advantage won't be uh, that much sufficient so that is how this works out for the entire portfolio analytics we may start with our you know uh, qna section uh, for today uh, so uh, if anyone has any questions we can uh, start it up So, may do you want to just uh, quickly explain the rescale function um, when you're editing the portfolio? Um, you know, uh, there's a question on the chat. Okay. Um, so when you edit, edit explain. the the rescale function, just edit the portfolio. Just add a stop. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so just uh, add, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, for the rescale, uh, you know, function, it is pretty useful because let's say we remove some couple of securities here, right? And now, uh, you know, we have only fifty percent allocated into the portfolio. And let's say we are adding couple of uh, funds again. So, let's say Axis Small Cap. So, this is, you know, you are making some changes into the portfolio, or maybe Parag Parag Flexi Cap, right? So, once you have added this, now you definitely want to, you know. allocate it with 100% because you cannot allocate this as 70%. So what you can do is you can either rescale to 100 or either you can make it like let's say 12% here uh 20% here you know approximately and then you can just rescale to 100. Okay just a second and then you can rescale to 100. So you can easily see it rescales to 100 uh, you know whatever asset allocation you put in. Yeah. So basically, the uh, ultimate effect is if your total weights are adding up to more than hundred, then it will proportionally decrease everything down to a hundred. Um, and if it's below hundred, it will proportionally increase everything up to a hundred. Um, so that's basically the yeah, usefulness of this. Um, there's another question saying upload option. Do you have any format? Um, yeah. So if you want to upload a um you know portfolio um it's actually very simple you can um, you don't even need to save and upload a file you can just copy and paste directly from excel and the format is nothing but two columns one column with an icin code and the second column can have either one of three things percentage um it just has 10 10 15 20 like that 
uh, amount in you know rupees or uh, or even the shares um, of stocks and funds. Um, so you can have the units for funds and shares for stocks. Um, so you just copy and you just put your cursor into this box and Control V, and you will get um, you know uh, it'll look end up looking just like this. And then you just validate. Uh, we click the validate button uh, at the bottom. Please make sure that you select um, the correct drop down uh, so we know what you're sending us. Um, yeah. um, okay, um, there is a question about um, someone requiring sp uh, separate training. Um, so, can somebody in the team please take note of that and um, and um, you know offer um, a separate training um, session for? Uh, for Mr. Mr. Deepak. Um, okay, um, there's another, um, yeah, so so then we have, uh, yeah, there's no more questions on the chat. Um, so I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, okay, sir, this is Narayan. Uh, I have basically two questions. One, uh, last time I mean, I got a training where we can create model portfolios as per our, this one. So if you want to share the comparison of investors like prospects, current portfolio with our model portfolio, comparison of the performances yeah. over a past three years, five years or 10 years kind of thing, how that can be done? This question number one. Question number two, uh, this again as a feedback I had given, uh, in, in while uploading this cash and all, we take the current value or current holdings of that uh, mutual fund holdings of the uh, client as on today. Uh, we do not consider what was the holding period of multiple schemes that he is having. So example, some SIPs he could have started around seven years back, some five years back, some three years back, some six months back. So uh, his returns could be different than scheme returns. In this, what we are comparing is basically the, in case we had started all these investments in like uh, on maybe X date of 2017, how the portfolio would have performed till today. We are considering one day. But client might have invested on multiple dates. He would have started investments on multiple dates. So is there any way where we can actually get those current performances, like his personal returns on every scheme, and then show again this? Had you invested all the invest all the schemes in on particular day, then how it would have performed? So sure. is, is that huh? yeah, sure. So I'll I'll just answer your second question first. So basically, you know, what firstly what we are uh, what we are not doing is reporting on the client's performance. Right. Um, so if we were doing that, then yes, we are right. We would need to find out the, um, the entry price, the entry date, etc. We would need to basically have a set of all your clients transactions and only then would be able to, uh, would we be able to correctly report on what the client's profit and loss looks like over last three, four years. Um, what we are doing here is slightly different. We are basically looking at what they currently hold and analyzing the historical price of that portfolio, much in the same way that uh, before buying a stock, you will almost certainly look at the historical price of the stock before making a decision on whether to buy it or not. In the same way, we are looking at the current portfolio of the client, looking at the historical price of that portfolio, which is what you see here, which is the backlist, to make decisions about whether this is a good portfolio or not. So this is certainly not a report of the client's performance. That is something that you will get from your back office system where you have the XIRR of the portfolio of each position. So we, in fact, even we, uh, we even have a client section which can connect to your RTA data, uh, but even that will only take the latest holdings of your clients. It does not take in, um, we don't even save the historical data. So what we do in the portfolio section is always based on, uh, you know, analyzing the current portfolio because in terms of analysis for future returns, the only thing that matters um, is what you hold currently. I'm not saying that the historical trades, historical transactions and the client's PNL is not important. Of course, it is very important. But in this particular analysis, what we are doing is we are focusing on what the future can, cannot hold. Okay. And in order to do that, we focus on what is there today in the book. Um, uh, and sorry, sir, yeah. I, forgot, I, 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 I forgot your first question. Can you repeat that one, please? Uh, yeah, so the so first question was basically, uh, we have created our model portfolios yeah. and I want to show the comparison of the performances of my model portfolio against the client's portfolio. So basically yes. you had gone, you had taken all these securities into compare section, right? Yeah. So yeah. same way I want to compare, I want to just show him if the indices of his portfolio, how it has performed in last five years 
and my model portfolio how it, it would have performed whether uh, my yes. port, my portfolio would have created some alpha or his portfolio would have outperformed my model portfolio like perfect so we do have the right thing for that umair can we just go to the compare uh, portfolios uh, tool which is actually right there sir on the top right you see so here what you can do is just save to portfolios um you know in this case in this example we'll load uh, the client on the left hand side and let's assume that you know whatever is on the right hand side is your model portfolio um we may try something else which is looks a bit different maybe um, we don't know if it's going to be better or not but just pick anything um and so so, so what we've done here on the left hand side the clients let's say clients current portfolio and on the right hand side you are giving them a suggestion uh, that you know this is what i think you should have okay so this is a good example we uh, i think we, this is one of our optimized portfolios internally so you can say to the client that the green line is the historical price of what i am suggesting the blue line is what you are currently holding and if you look at the numbers um you can actually see that you know the annual volatility for example um of your portfolio is actually higher than mine while at the same time i am giving you more return right so so this is really good you can say that obviously this also means that you have a higher sharp ratio that 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 we have a higher sharp ratio than they do so this is a pretty good case to you know take to the client and say that this is how i am improving your portfolio and if you want to uh, this is uh, you want to put things side by side you can go to the next tab the asset allocation tab here you will see the client's portfolios asset allocation on the left yours on the right here just by eyeballing you can see equity sectors are more diversified on the right side um um you can look at exposures uh, which is the next tab which more numerically presented um and uh, rolling returns is also it can be useful uh, for example you know you can look at an average six month period right so the client had a 7.72% average six month period what you're suggesting is you know is you know almost 2% higher 9.23% on the right hand side so again you're presenting a case where you what you're suggesting is actually you know uh, has a historical performance better than what they have and finally draw down for kind of controlling risk uh, and obviously this depends on what you compare but you can see that here clearly that even the biggest drawdown size is actually um you know slightly smaller um and uh, you know, there, there may be slight uh, differences on the right versus the left which you can point out so this is how you can compare two portfolios side by side uh i think this is perfect this is a very useful tool thank you so much for that i was not aware of this button bus particularly uh yeah again this next question again one more can i can i ask yeah, one question uh this may not be directly uh, related to your this one uh, but again from our, our practice perspective i am asking uh this is the case we are comparing the performances uh, somehow the model portfolio obviously what we are we are maintaining uh, has been performing well uh, and just to just understand how to handle those queries client queries because if we if the client ready is agrees that ki theek hai sir going forward you can just manage my portfolio so whatever call that you have to take we can take so uh, but this this is again we are talking about historic performance uh but uh, yeah i'm just uh, i'm I just getting you know uh, i understand but you know the, the answer to this question is very simple um is that people lots of time people pick out this thing but this is just historical performance we're just making decision on history but the reality is there is nothing else no one has anything else. no one has a future data point historical data is all that exists anywhere around the world there's nothing else when you for example if you compare two prices of two stocks imagine for a second that this blue line was reliance and the green line was itc whatever right even that we are looking at a historical price of two stocks right and we are making okay this is better this is the uh, worse we are looking at fundamental data that is also historical because that has been released into the public domain the market has already taken that into account every single data point that we are using everywhere is historical so the thing is the only thing we can do is compare historical data in fact every time we get a question saying but this is just showing me what i would what would have happened if i had held this portfolio for the last 5 years that is true but when you look at the price of reliance that is also what that's showing you that is what you will happen if you had bought reliance five years ago right then then on that basis we should not be looking at a reliance chart also right so the problem is that um, obviously you know at some point you have to accept that other than historical data there is nothing else that that's all we can do 
um uh, other you know, the only way it is to have some inside information which is illegal right other than that there is no historical data that is um, going to actually accurately predict the future so what we can do is try to control the risk you know try to look at volatility try to look at things like sharp ratio try to look at valet risk try to look at some stats you know what kind of average days do i have what kind of average months do we have these usually pan out over time um you know uh, especially if you want to look at the stability of these numbers for example you might think i'm looking at an average month of 1.35 but is that really going to stand true over the next 5 years well we can check it we can run some rolling analysis right and we can check what a 30 day period or 60 day period um you know how up and down does it go right how volatile is that um, every 30 day period every 60 uh, day period and then we can get an idea okay generally speaking it has stuck to that range but again we are doing the same thing we are analyzing historical data just in a different way so i understand you would get this question but i think the answer is that you know there is nothing else um there, there other than historical data anyway correct thank i got your point okay. thanks thanks for answering my queries no uh, yeah on this sheet what is the definition of positions there is some nine positions Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, there, there. Oh, sir, this is the number. Sorry, maybe we should change that to uh, holdings. That basically it means how many, um, uh, how many uh, things do you have in your portfolio on the left hand side versus on the right hand side. So the suggested portfolio has eleven um, uh, funds. The one on the left has nine funds. But what is the average sense. then? I mean, I, that this is understood. Average this is the number of number of funds. Oh, sorry, sir. Average means this is the average of. the percentage holding that you have across the nine oh. so your average holding in the portfolio holding not exposure is oh. 11% here the average holding is slightly smaller okay, okay okay and max max obviously just to see that you don't have too much concentration onto one thing oh, all right all right okay 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 it is clear yeah yeah this is very useful we had not seen it earlier Yes, sir. it has been there for a long time, sir. It has a pop. I, I not pop, but I think it has a yeah. It has a PDF report also that you know you can print out this report. Um, you can you can choose whether or not you want to put a capital. Um, and then uh, let's just quickly show it. Um, so you know this is saying one. You can name the portfolio whatever you want. A versus B. You get some uh, you know performance stats side by side, and then everything else is side by side. You will see on the left hand side the client, right hand side. uh this is what we've done in this case you can do whatever you like um mm-hmm. and uh, you know it'll show asset allocation side by side rolling analysis side by side you know this is quite useful uh, again to look at uh, you know stability of some of these measures and then finally um you know we just put the portfolio side by side now you can see rupee numbers here because umair put a uh, capital amount there so it uses that capital amount if you want the uh, client to actually see okay fine uh, if he's agreeing to do this You should get an idea. Okay, in access, I'm going to put three lakhs. In Mary, I'm going to put this much, this much. Um, so this can help you give a more realistic kind of picture. Or uh, if you don't put a capital, it'll just show percent. Mm-hmm. So can you just show me where did you get this one? Um, one yeah. Sir. So in the portfolio section, um, uh, basically on the top, you will see. Uh, yeah, may just zoom out a little bit so we can show more. Uh, of the yeah, screen. I think uh, some screen is lost. Ha, huh? okay. Yeah. So the, in the portfolio section, which is access from the left side menu, I'm um, not, not create PDF. I, I mean, how did we get this compare? Oh, this one. So so once you click on the compare uh, icon over there, this this page will open up where you can compare two portfolios. And right on the top left, you see the create PDF button. Mm-hmm. You click on that, and you will get the option to either enter a capital or just click on standard PDF, which will just show you a percentage. No, no, I meant how did we? I mean, to, before starting the comparison, right. how did we get the two? Uh, Oh, so that, I, could, yeah, that, I will go to portfolios afterwards. What to do? Uh, after that, sir, that icon on the top. Which icon? That? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I may just log. Yeah, this ref- he's refresh the page. Now, from beginning, when you go to the portfolio section, this is what you'll see, and then just on the top there is this compare to portfolios. Okay. Yeah, that link. So, so you click on it. This will open up. That, I will get two here. Okay. Okay. So I can select one as the. Okay. Exactly. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that. Uh, Okay, that balance symbol is the one that is have to try. Okay, that's right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, there's a question saying, can we get a recording of the session? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, just in a few days after this um uh, uh call, um, we put everything up on YouTube anyway. Um, there is a link on the top. You can see a video link on the top of the application. You can click on that any time. And and here I think uh, last week's recording is already there. We also keep putting other things also. 
Um, so there you go. That's last week's recording. So today's recording will also be put on there along with everything. So you can just check the YouTube channel. If you want to be notified, you can subscribe to it if you want. Um, uh, okay. So there's a uh, another question saying for reviewing existing flat portfolio um, with RIK for direct plans. Um, uh, yes, sir. So uh, for direct funds, um, uh, the R RTFIs look slightly different. Um, we are happy to start um, doing that. Um, if you could, um, uh, we'll ask someone to get in touch with you directly, sir, um, um, because we may need to see some example files to see if we can incorporate them in the same way that we are incorporating the um, the regular funds. Um, uh, so, uh, Omer or someone, can you please note down that somebody should get in touch with Mr. Atul Mishra? Sure. Okay, perfect. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Hi, oh. I'm Sushil Parashar. I have a question. Yes, sir. My question is, uh, if at all I want to really see uh, that which all uh, funds uh, have a particular sector in terms of its exposure uh, in their portfolios, can I do that? I know I can do that by a particular scrape or particular stock. But let's say I want to uh, go through directly through uh, sectoral uh, exposure to a particular sector of different schemes. Can I do that by a simple search? Yes, sir. Um, so um, uh, may let's go to the fund section and then holding analysis. So here, sir, um, it's not so much a sector search, but here what we're doing here is we're showing you all the sectors, right? And we're showing you, um, and you can obviously sort, uh, you can easily just do control F uh, in, in Google Chrome to find your sector, uh, but there are not that many here. Um, uh, but here again, you can find any sector you want and here you will see uh, either in average sector holding um, in percentage terms or in value, rupees value, uh, that mutual funds have invested into, let's say, uh, any, just take any sector, um, like IT software, etc. cetera. Um, and here, uh, this is the average number, but once you click on that number, mm -hmm. uh, you will actually get a drill down, which will okay. show you all the funds um, that are, um, you know, that have this much percentage exposure to the sector. And just for clarity, sir, um, this is showing you only funds that are categorized as equity funds. Um, so if you want to, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you can only see asset class by asset class. So you can analyze debt funds in one go or equity funds in one go because there's a large amount of data. Um, and also you can see historical sector exposures changing over time also. So not only can you drill down on any of these numbers, you can click on any mm -hmm. right here. Um, you can also see how, let's say, the finance exposure on a percentage basis has actually reduced over the last 12 months. And Umair, let's just click on crore for a second so we can actually see whether it's it's true or it's just a matter of the UM. Okay, um, that, so that's, now, that, that's really very handy. And yeah. similarly, can I really uh, make a search for uh, fixed income schemes? So, for example, I want to really see the exposure of different schemes to a particular uh, uh, paper. A particular yeah. paper. So how do yeah, I so, see that? So that so you can go to debt holdings, the fourth tab uh, here inside the holding analysis section. Here you can search any debt security or uh, or name. So if you already know the full debt security you're looking for. Okay. Okay. So the what what Umair is showing you right now is a is a general search. Any debt security that has the name Reliance in it, it will show up here, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you know exactly which bond, for example. Then you can type on the left. So, like Umair has copied the ISIN code. You type the ISIN code over there, it will show up. It shows up means there's something there. You click on it and it will show you all the funds that are invested into that ISIN code. Wonderful. Thank mm. you so much. No problem. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I have a very basic question to ask. Uh, so, my question was, uh, I mean, I'm just trying to uh, create a portfolio for uh, one of my prospect clients, wherein, uh, I mean, uh, the portfolio has been created uh, in the portfolio section, but, uh, however, I... I'm not getting the amount. I mean, it is the percentage which I can see in the holding, right? So, 
where do I punch the other entries if I want to edit the portfolio with the amount like the client has an existing portfolio somewhere else right. I have to I have to compare that portfolio with my uh, funds uh, recommendation so yeah. how so, do I do that so here if you don't want to enter a new portfolio with percentage um, there are two options and you want to uh, use you know rupees or units or something there are two ways you can do it one is you can do it in the um, in the client section and if you go to the client section and you click go to manual data which will be your second tab here you can just go to add client on the top you just put a name um, and just uh, let's just do something yeah and yeah and uh, and then you click on add client okay uh, and then here one by one you can punch in the let's say you take any fund you can mm -hmm. either put the units or shares or you can put the current value it's one if you put one the other will be calculated so if i do if i if i uh, do a manual data yeah uh, i am right now on the manual data itself yeah then what is the next step that i have to do uh, just uh, you can look for a add client um, uh, add client uh, menu at the top okay that's it and you Fine. click on that and then Fine. you go through this process and it will calculate the percentage holding automatically for you and the value of the portfolio will change as the nav comes in over the next few days perfect uh, perfect right? this is what i was actually looking for yeah. And if the holding changes, then it is your responsibility to come and update the units. Basically. Okay. That, that, that's why it's, this is a manual data set. If you go for the RTA connection, that will, that is also automatic. Okay. So what has happened now? Uh, from this client, uh, we have transferred the portfolio uh, to the portfolio section. Yeah. 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 Right, but uh, there are certain edits which needs to be done. So now I am not been able to see that portfolio in the client section. Can I again move back this portfolio to the client section for further edit? Um, the thing is, uh, ideally, I would suggest you open and uh, you create a new portfolio in the client section because okay. moving from portfolio to clients won't make much sense because the portfolio section only stores percentage, no no units or rupees. Right, so there is nothing to move. The client section deals with rupees and amounts. Right, so, so section is only percentage. Correct. So relevant data uh, which are required, it is in the client section, right? Yes, yes. So okay. once you save it, it will be there. It's like your own place. You, you Perfect. Perfect. And from here itself, I if I want to compare two of the portfolios, uh, I can do that. Is it? If you want to compare two portfolios, you will have one small additional step. Umair, let's just know. Uh, you can see, for example, this is a portfolio that's been created. Um, you just click this button once and it will copy up any portfolio from clients Fine. to the portfolio section. And once it's in the portfolio section, you can easily compare using the compare tool. So if, if I want to compare two of the portfolios, I have to transfer the portfolios to the portfolio section, then only I'll be able to compare it, is it? That's right. That is that, that is the current situation. But we are also, uh, over time, we are going to create uh, uh, some functionality where you can directly do this. You don't have to transfer the portfolios. But right now, you have to. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions from anyone? Okay, perfect. Um, so, Umair, I guess we can finish up now. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for attending this session. And uh, we would catch up again next Friday, 4 o'clock. And um, uh, so thank you, everyone, and have a nice weekend.